In about the year 350 BC, renowned Greek philosopher Aristotle already recognized that increasing costs of living are making it more difficult for the common man to get out of the 9 to 5 hustle. Imagine Aristotle's face if he were to discover that people were financing Domino's Pizza in 2023. About 2,000 years later in 1651, esteemed English philosopher Thomas Hobbes proclaimed that natural life is nasty, brutish, and short. Although he was still 370 years early, Hobbes unknowingly described short-term option strategies that have grown immensely popular among retail traders. Some things, as it turns out, never change. The rat race is rough, as the screen generation is discovering. Young men are under high pressure, leading to increased frustration. Sometimes, their frustrations took a dark turn, with men rejecting society and embracing hatred. Other times, these guys vented their frustrations in the gym and got shredded, but generally lacked direction. But in ideal scenarios, young men rid themselves of their fears, shot their shots, and built an empire of their own design. Among them is Nanobytes, a textbook example of Sigma male grind set and immense courage. A man whose shape and form would make Diogenes of Sinope proud. A man whose audacity with women was so fearless that it even crept into his trading style. It is my honor to share his story of success. And ultimately, well, you know how these stories end up. Nanobytes is a longtime Redditor who became active on the platform in mid-2017. Back in those early days of the shitcoin boom, our man heavily pushed his self-made crypto mining app for Android devices called Pickaxe. However, it does not appear he made more than a few hundred dollars, but seeing the world of shitcoins rise and fall around him inspired him to approach life with a boldness. By that time, he had already ventured to college in Des Moines, Iowa to pursue a computer science degree and land a job in the cryptocurrency space. He was also determined to get frequent hands-on experiences with attractive women. As every computer science major knows, these two goals are incongruent. CS majors will go to class and realize it is an absolute sausage fest. According to YouTuber Casually Explained, they'll say, Oh no, I want to major in JavaScript, but I also want to get laid. What does this mean? Well, it means you fucked up. Now you have to do two completely unrelated activities on opposite sides of the spectrum, and you have to excel at both. But Nanobytes ain't no bitch. He stepped up to the plate and went all in on both programming and dating, and fell flat on his face. By the end of 2018, our man abandoned his pursuit of a college degree to hunt work, and his puns and Twitter DMs continued to misfire. Getting left on red was a common issue. Worse, his unspecified job at John Deere offered an unsatisfactory $45,000 a year. But rather than devolve into solitude, Nanobytes went through extensive reflection during an extended retreat to Thailand in 2019. While camping among a troop of gibbons, the Nano determined three things. One, he must improve his Tinder pickup game. Two, he must trade stunk. And three, he must get a better job. This time spent among the wildlife was a turning point for Nanobytes. Rather than resign himself to his unsatisfying circumstances, our man returned to the American Midwest with a vengeance. Nanobytes made it his intention to touch boobs prior to focusing on finance. Ultimately, an unquestionably good decision. The big shot simultaneously hit the gym and used some hair restoration supplement called Finasteride to flip his game. During the COVID lockdown, Homeboy went from looking like a German youth raised by a single mom to a Bolshevik fuckboy ready to seize your means of reproduction. The lockdown-enabled transformation bore fruit. And coupled with a Tinder bio update that solicited only pun-loving women to message him, Nano went from a tacky dude sliding into their DMs with weak jokes to a witty chap with strong texting game. Within months, our man was laying pipe in tall women specifically, including this 5'11 Amazon who wanted his babies. Coming off this strong success, Nano turned his sights to his second priority of trading stonk and options. Nanobytes cracked open Robinhood and dumped in an unspecified small sum of money. His goal was to seek large gains through aggressive trading. And initially, as this usually goes, he had remarkable success. And despite his modest salary and student loan debt, he traded his way to $10,000 in 2020. However, like so many others, the overzealous young man underestimated the impact of Theta Trades Gone Bad. Nanobytes went all in on AMD Iron Condors with tight strikes. And when Sue Bay rode the COVID bubble to 60% gains in the summer of 2020, 
the young man's condors were blown out hard. By expiration, our chap was insolvent with his $10,000 portfolio converted into a $280 margin call. Nano tried again months later on Webull, expecting the change of broker to fix his issue. But rather than pursue balanced trading, our guy bought Tilray stock on 2X margin, a rookie move of modest IQ. By November, he was once again in margin call. The impact of this loss was palpable, but the devastation did nothing to abate his appetite for risk. Instead, Nano flipped his game and sought a higher income as necessitated by his third goal, which would also fund his resurgent portfolio. He first began a TikTok channel about performing remote work during the lockdown and quickly amassed 1 million followers. But TikTok creators get paid less than Chinese teenagers at those RuneScape farms in 2007. Coming out of lockdown, the small-time Big Shot leveraged his experience in crypto apps to land a job at a blockchain startup for $60,000 salary. Within a year, he swapped to an unspecified finance company for 108K. But weeks later, he hosted a raunchy photo shoot with an Instagram model while at work, for which he was promptly fired. Unperturbed, Nano briefly went back to John Deere before quitting for a year to start an international YouTube journey, leveraging his TikTok followers to get monetized quickly. Since he was honestly not having a great time in the workforce, Nano's YouTube channel challenged his frugalness. While he got paid for creating content, he challenged himself to survive for as long as possible on $100 in such exotic locations as Istanbul, Krakow, Athens, and Batumi, which is apparently a city in the country of Georgia. He typically survived about a week at a time on $100 by sleeping in sleazy hostels. But while uploading his content, his net gain each day was substantial, allowing him to minimize his spend, resolve his debts, and invest in the stock market. So I just got mugged here in Beirut, right outside the airport. Ironically, being homeless was great for his finances. However, Nano was robbed at gunpoint in Lebanon, which forced him to return to the US in late 2022. While home, apparently resolved of his debts, the still homeless homie took a lucrative remote job at Microsoft, allowing him to invest to his maximum potential. It was at this point in production that I consulted Nano on my script so far. For example, I initially thought that he was fired for taking sexy selfies at his office, not hosting a naughty photo shoot with a girl, an error which we quickly corrected. But Nano's real issue was that I was painting him as an unshakable Chad. He rejected this characterization in an extended 33-page Instagram story. Instead, he wants the world to know that he is as fragile as the rest of us. Not a chap who entered the hyperbolic time chamber and emerged with the courage to quit his day job and travel the world solo until he got robbed at gunpoint in Lebanon. Even then, not returning because he got robbed at gunpoint, but because he needed to replace his stolen passport. Nano, I have painted you as a man of incalculable swag. You reject this picture of yourself and want your faults recognized because you're human and that's okay. What I'd like to do is say, I'm sorry, but I'm really not. You're a baller now, you gotta deal with that. But you want your faults recognized? Then let's recognize them. In January of 2023, Nano Chad was making $150,000 a year working remotely from Microsoft in the back of his sports car that suffers mechanical problems suspiciously often. Around 9 a.m., he cracked open his laptop, plugged it into his cigarette lighter, and got to work. After joining a department meeting that could have been an email, he flipped over to the stock market and began DD. He recognized that the dust began to settle around the 2022 bear market, and the time for a reversal was now. From his point of view, Tesla was one of the most unfairly beaten down stocks of the bear fiesta. The company lost 75% of its market cap from its highs, but Nano was unconvinced that the company deserved such hardcore punishment. You guys might remember that my engine in my car blew up and it cost $4,000. I didn't want to pay $4,000 for a new engine, so I decided to see if I could get the stock market to pay for it for me. In mid-January, he put his entire $10,000 portfolio on out-of-the-money call debit spreads. If Elon let our man down, he'd be back to square one, living an austere lifestyle while continuing to dump paychecks from his well-paying job into fruitless marketplace. But by January 18th, Nanobytes fully exposed his $30,000 portfolio to the gawking masses. The Wall Street Bets peasantry begged him to sell. Tripling your portfolio in two days is no small feat. To his credit, the big man did close the spreads and set his $10,000 initial investment aside on a temporary basis. His $20,000 of house money went right back onto the roulette wheel, this time a full 20 bands worth of put debit spreads. 
Nano believed that Tesla had adequately risen on Wednesday, and by Thursday was due for a breather. According to Weeble, his trading strategy was safe. Although that broker assessment and marginal DD was subject to mockery, the audacious play printed stacks once again. When Tesla stepped down a few notches on Thursday, his account had shot up to over 39,000. Nano closed and reassessed. Going into Wednesday, the wild child decided that Tesla's temporary retreat was finished. He primed his entire 40,000 balance on call debit spreads expiring in two days. His palms were sweaty, but tendies awaited with open wings as Nano hit submit. Within hours, Tesla blasted its moonshot and another $10,000 landed in his pocket by day's end. With great courage, our man elected not to close, but instead held firm overnight. The risk was immense. His entire balance hinged on Tesla notching another uptick, but his position dictated that if Tesla continued its ferocious rally to above $129, he would enjoy a casual $30,000 gain, nearly doubling his already ballooning account. And for this foolhardy move, Nano was rewarded with the full money shot. When Rebecca Black announced her weekend plans, our man was in the back counting his paper, from $10,000 to over 76 k in a week. But of course, the WSB syndrome took full control. Our high flyer wasn't done yet. Following Monday, Nano was convinced that the market rally would continue unabated. Seeking a low risk approach, he took only six sevenths of his account and dumped it into at the money call debit spreads expiring that afternoon. As long as SPY did not turn red, his account would double once again. With a streak of luck that would give the devil a run for his money, Nano cheated fate once more as SPY bent to his will and filled his pockets. In just six trading days, Nano was up from 10K to 138K. The gains were intoxicating. The only way an addict gets his fix is to devour more, and Nano was fully consumed. His extensive DD indicated that Tesla would not experience a face-ripping rally through the end of the week. The assessment was rather conservative, all things considered. With this state of mind, there was only one logical play to throw his entire account at 8% out of the money call credit spreads expiring that Friday. The only way to lose money was if Elon rammed Tesla back into the stratosphere with no abort code, and that's exactly what he did. By the end of the first day, Nano lamented that Tesla had shot up beyond his expectations to 144, putting him deep in the red. So update, uh, Tesla has gone up quite a bit in after hours. So now I'm standing at potentially losing everything. But he remained steadfast and held his position, banking on a reversal. Throughout the week, Tesla ripped and zipped its way from $130 to $180. With each uptick, the whip came down harder on Nano, but the pain quickly transcribed into numbness, with the reckless trader diamond handing those spreads into dust. But what else can I say for Nano that he can't say for himself? And now I've set the bar so high. Like at this point, the benchmark is a thousand percent gains. So if I come back like next month and I put another 12,000 into this and I double it, let's say I double it twice, I make like $60,000, I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna sit there and think, oh, I need to, I need to earn more. So I, I've set myself up for failure. If I try to earn this back, I will just keep blowing my money. I'm done, I've had my fun, I've had my thousand percent gains, I've had my 10 X's. I'm a Wall Street Bets legend at this point. I'm gonna be in the Kamikaze Cash videos. So, I guess you could think of it as like paying $12,000 to be featured in other YouTubers' videos. That's a way to think about it, right? I paid to be featured in some YouTube videos. Within the span of two weeks, Nano blasted his way to 138K and then lost it all just as quickly. One false move cost him everything. By the end of the month, Nano was back to living on the streets to make thought-provoking YouTube videos about frugal living in the city while working off a laptop in the back of his car. An interesting character indeed. Nano Bytes' journey is one for the record books, and it is my honor to bestow upon him the crown of degeneracy. Madman, please accept this crown and assume your throne on this fine coronation. Who wants to be king?
I highly encourage all degens watching this video to watch Nanobytes' homeless challenge on YouTube. Since 75% of you have no concept of risk management and will likely wind up homeless, you need to be prepared. Join our free Discord as well and don't miss a moment of the action. See you next time.